My name is Khaled Malik. It's a pleasure to be here to talk about my book. Uh, the title of the book is Why Has China Grown So Fast For So Long? The essential argument is that uh, development is about transformation. It's about changing society, about changing attitudes, creating new institutions. Uh, it's about managing change processes. Uh, when Deng Xiaoping uh, made a very famous statement about cr crossing the stream by feeding the stones, and since he did that, China has never introduced a macro policy all in one go. It's always done piloting, experimentation, see what has worked, and then gradually scale it up. And therefore, we were, in the book, I'm trying to dig deeper into how China has done better. How is the relationship between bureaucracy and, and the state and economic policy? How did the economic policy and social policy come connected without Mao? Deng Xiaoping would not have succeeded easily. And the simple reason is that Mao, and what we can argue about the cost of all of the reforms, Mao was able to, and the Communist Party, uh, which went into that whole uh, situation, was able to make uh, people much more equal. Assets were equally distributed. People got, uh, there were a lot of emphasis on educating people. So life expectancy went up and education went up. So by the time Deng Xiaoping started his reforms in the late 70s, uh, it immediately resulted in many people getting better off. Poverty went down. And, and Deng Xiaoping also did something quite wise. He realized that if people are not interested in reform, reform cannot go forward. So he tried to, in a matter of a few years, he changed almost two-thirds of um, village, uh, district level, or state level, provincial level officials and brought in younger people, more educated people who would be committed to modernizing China. And that I think was very profoundly important. So it's not just simply the kind of policy you, you carry out, it's also how you implement and how you believe in a reform you're trying to move forward. China will keep growing for the next couple of decades. And there's a, again, very basic reason for that. Many of the sources of growth are still not exhausted. China is anticipating moving about 300 million people from rural areas to urban areas. And that's a stimulus for growth. China, Chinese are better educated. And there's a great investment of science and technology going on at every level. So I think all of the, these things will continue in the future. And, but we have to take a step back and ask the more basic question, as you've done, is growth sustainable or not? And when you look at, uh, we did some work for the, our global report on human development, and we mapped uh, all countries in relation to human development achievements and global footprint. And very few countries in the world are actually sustainable. Uh, rich countries have to reduce their average footprint. Poor countries have to increase development, human development, but some are maintained and not uh, exceed the, uh, the thresholds of uh, the pressure you put on economic, on, on ecological resources. So I think this is a challenge for all societies, and particularly for China, because China is large. China is a large economy now, the second largest in the world. It's also a large num a larger number of people. So these things are magnified when the numbers are so large. And I think uh, uh, there's already a lot of uh, commitment to new and renewable energy sources. The, uh, objectives set up by the government of reducing carbon intensity by 40%. All these are good things, but a deeper analysis is also needed because in the end, you want life sustainable, but sustainable in a way that people can breathe clean air, have drink clean water, and are able to balance life and society in a way. And these are the issues which uh, we need to be discussed, debated, and taken forward.